Hello, GHC Youth. I hope you are having another amazing week. I really enjoyed this past Sunday worship, being able to preach for you kind of a youth sermon from our Bible study series. And to see several of you there in person as well, I hope more of you would be able to join us as you can. Well, we are on week two of our series called After God's Own Heart, where we look at the Ten Commandments and we see that they're not just a list of restrictions on the life of a Christian. They're not that at all. But in fact, they are... Uh, ways that God has revealed his heart and his character, his lovingness and his goodness to us, uh, and shown us the blueprints to have a happy, a blessed, a, a great life. And so this week we look at the third and fourth commandments. Open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20, and let's take a look. I have here, verse seven reads, do not misuse the name of the Lord your God because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. Do you know what it means to misuse the name of God, to use his name in vain? Well, first, let's think of just some common honorific titles. We, we call a judge your honor. We call a policeman or woman um, officer. We might call a, a military uh, person after their rank, like colonel or major or general. Your name identifies you uniquely, but the title describes the authority or honor that's given to you. Now, we know Jesus, right? The name of God, Jesus. And in first name Jesus, last name Christ, right? No, no, Christ is actually his title, right? His name is Jesus. Christ is his title, which means Savior. Um, but what about the Father God? Do you know his name? Well, it might not be obvious, but it's written all throughout the Bible in the Old Testament. Anytime you look uh, in the Bible like we have here in, uh, on the screen, and you see in all caps the word L-O-R-D, Lord, that's actually kind of a code for the name of God, which is Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. -H. I know it's kind of weird. Um, ancient Hebrew had no vowels, but Y-H-W-H. -H. Uh, we translate that as Jehovah. The reason you don't see that name in the Bible is because to Jewish people, it is such a holy and sacred name that you dare not speak it or write it unless you were a purified like priest. And it's kind of like... Harry Potter, right? Um, he who shall not be named Voldemort. He's not named because he's such an evil, vile person. It strikes fear into the hearts of people who hear that name. And so just to, to eliminate all that, you don't speak his name. Well, God is so holy. He's the opposite. He's so good and holy and loving that for us who are flawed and sinful to speak his name would desecrate it in a way. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, um, we're told that God so exalts Jesus, he gives him the name above all names, that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. But how do we use the name of God or the name of Jesus? We've turned them into some of the most commonly used exclamations and curse words. I won't even repeat them here, but have you ever thought that God is omnipresent? He is everywhere. And we use his name in such a, a casual and vulgar way. The name of God, the name of Jesus, who sacrificed his life for you, who gives you eternal life, who pours out his grace and love for you, and we use his name in such an awful way. How you use a person's name exposes what you think and how you feel about that person. If someone's particularly evil and vile, you might call them Hitler. If someone's extremely compassionate to the poor, you might call them like a Mother Teresa. How you use God's name to convey and think about your Savior exposes your heart for God. Second commandment is, or the fourth one is, is this, verse eight, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And it goes on and on and on. I won't get into all of that, but this is about a day of rest, not because God needed the rest, right? When he created creation, six days of creation, one day of rest. He didn't need to rest, but he wanted to establish kind of the, the, the pattern for us, the purpose for creation. Um, to enjoy that creation that reflects God's glory. The Sabbath focuses it even more. If you read here, remember, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You're to labor six days, do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Okay, this isn't just a day to rest from work. I mean, that's what it sounds like, but this is a day to rest to God, with God. Right? To enjoy God's creation, to have fellowship with God, time and worship, study of the Bible, meditation, prayer. Um, not just a day to play golf or catch up on sleep or hang out with your friends. I mean, sure, you enjoy that, right? It doesn't have to be exactly a 24-hour period. But this was such an important um, command to the Jews, just like the name of God, that 
Um, they had severe restrictions. They limited the number of steps you could walk on the Sabbath. You couldn't cook meals. You couldn't even flip on light switches. They would just leave it on the night before. If you go to a building that had an elevator, you couldn't walk in and push the elevator button. So they would have a separate elevator that just, it would open and go up and down throughout the day, just continuously, and it would stop at every single floor. Can you imagine if you have like 50 floors, you have to wait for it to go and go up and down every single floor um, for you to catch it. You know, we make ourselves so busy. We give all kinds of excuses. I'm, I, I'm too busy. School's too busy. I have this, I have that. I, I, I don't have time for God. I don't have time to read the Bible. I don't have time to pray. You put your time into what's important to you. And if God, who sh should be um, so precious to you, you will take that time to rest. That time of rest gives you a chance to know God. To not just learn about Him, but to know Him. Know who He is. Know what He wants for your life. To, to get renewed, to be revived, to have a retreat. You don't have to wait for the one, uh, the one weekend a year where we do a youth retreat. You can find that time to retreat with God when you rest, to open your hearts to praise and worship, to experience joy, to enjoy God's creation. Listen, Sabbath is not just about resting from work, but it's about making time to spend resting with God, period. It's, it's that simple. So do it in whatever way you can, whatever place, whatever time. Do it in, in the car on the way to school, right? Put in your, your Air, uh, AirPods and, and just um, listen to some worship music. Pray a little bit before you go to school in the morning as you shower. Now, whatever it is, be creative. Find a time, a place throughout the day, multiple times, to read a quick verse on your phone, uh, to pray for your, your, your family or your small group, to listen to praise songs. Whatever you do, learn how to enjoy that rest with God because I, I want to show you this. Well, I'm, I'm not going to show you the, the scripture because it's really long, but in Psalm 145, verses 1 through 7, we get a description of what this kind of life looks like. Right, Not just do not misuse the name of God and don't work on the, on the Sabbath, but take a day of rest. This is what it looks like. Psalm 145 reads, I exalt you, my God, the King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you every day. I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your splendor and your glorious majesty and your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and will joyfully sing of your righteousness. Exalt, bless, praise, declare, proclaim, speak, testify, sing. I want every one of you to be able to know God in such a way that these pour out of your heart as often as possible. To do so, you have to rest in God to know him in this kind of way. Not just force yourself to read the Bible and pray because your parents make you, your pastor tells you, but to, but from that to enjoy the fellowship with him, to see how he's working in your heart and throughout your life. Then none of these things listed here at the bottom of the screen are forced or fake. That's not what I'm aiming for, just to do these things because you're supposed to, but to do these things because that's what's in your heart. Because that's who you are. That's who God is and Jesus is to you. Now, you may not feel like your heart is even close to feeling that way towards God or Christ, um, the way that's described here yet. But by um, pursuing a genuine relationship with Christ, opening up your heart to him, you can have this. This, this is an expression of faith that um, flows out of the most joyous times of your life. When life is good, family's healthy, you're enjoying friends and life. But it's also just as true and valid when your life is a wreck. When tragedy hits, <clears throat> when the unexpected derails your plans and you have no clue what to do. No one can give you that kind of faith. You have to find it in Jesus yourself. And that's what discipleship is all about. And that's what we're trying to grow toward in the youth ministry. So would you consider the way that you use the name of God in Jesus? Would you carve out a time with intentional rest with Christ? And would you open your heart to exalt, bless, praise, declare, proclaim, speak, testify, and sing of who Christ is and all that he's done for you? Well, GC Youth, that's it for this time. Have a blessed week, and I hope to see you soon.